Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Our topic today, today is very important about hyperprotectinemia. So, what we are going to discuss today? The definition, hyperprotectinemia, structure and the function of prolactin, epidemiology, etiology, clinical presentation, diagnosis, and lastly, the treatment of hyperprolactinemia. Okay, let us start with the definition. What is the definition of hyperprolactinemia? It is simple like that. Hyperprolactinemia is a condition of elevated serum prolactin. So what is the upper normal value of serum prolactin? The upper normal value in most lab, about 20 nanograms per milli. On average for women, in adult women, in reproductive age, it is about 13 nanograms per milli. For men, Adult men, it is about 5 nanograms per milli. So there is difference between women and men as regards the serum prolactin on average. Okay? So the upper normal value in lab is 20 nanograms per milli. Okay? So what about the structure, function, and the metabolism? Structure. The prolactin is... 198 amino acid protein produced in the lactotroph cells of the anterior pituitary gland. So the source of the prolactin is the anterior pituitary gland, the lactotroph cells specifically. And the prolactin is amino acid protein. Okay, what is the function of the prolactin? The main function is to enhance breast development during a pregnancy and to induce lactation. So it has an important role in development of the breast during pregnancy, okay, and inducing lactation. So what about the metabolism? Prolactin is metabolized by liver in 75%. That's why in liver cirrhosis you will find hyperprolactinemia. And in kidney, it is metabolized in kidney in 25%. Also in chronic renal failure, you will find hyperprolactinemia. Okay? So prolactin is metabolized in 75% in liver, in 25% in kidney. What about the half life of prolactin? The half life of prolactin is about 25 to 50 minutes. So, what is the control on the secretion of the prolactin? What is the hypothalamic control of prolactin secretion? Mainly, the control of the hypothalamus is inhibitory for prolactin. By secreting prolactin inhibiting factor, which is the dopamine, dopamine is the prolactin inhibiting factor that acts via type 2 dopamine receptor. What about the epidemiology? Hyperprolactinemia. Hyperprolactinemia occurs in less than 1% of general population. It is about 0.4% in some studies, 0.4% in unspecified adults. Okay? So, what about the prevalence? In women with secondary amenorrhea, with secondary amenorrhea, the hyperprolactinemia prevalence increased to 5 to 14 percent. Okay, 5 to 14 percent in women with secondary amenorrhea. What about women with galactorrhea? The prevalence is higher, it is about 25 percent of hyperprolactinemia. Okay. What about women with polycystic ovarian syndrome? The prevalence of hyperprolactinemia is 17% in such women. You should know that the most common pathologic type of the causes of hyperprolactinemia is prolactinoma, which is anterior pituitary tumor arising from lactotroph cells. It's called prolactinoma. 
and this accounting for about up to 40% of all recognized pituitary adenomas. Okay, let us go to the etiology. We have physiologic causes and we have pathologic causes. Physiologic causes and pathologic causes. Physiologic causes may be related to pregnancy, lactation, stress, sleep, sexual intercourse, okay, nevel stimulation. So all these are considered physiologic causes. Pathologic causes may be due to injury in the hypothalamus pituitary tract, tumor or infiltrating disease or sarcoidosis, histocytosis, or trauma or radiation exposure, or maybe due to general or systemic disease like liver cell failure, chronic renal failure, like hypothyroidism, like Cushing disease, okay, chest wall trauma or surgery or herpes zoster, or maybe due to medications like antipsychotic, antidepressant, some antihypertensive like alpha missile doba and so on. So. I have physiologic causes and pathologic causes, okay? Let us start with the physiologic causes. One of them is the pregnancy, and the pregnancy overall is considered the commonest cause of hyperperitoneum, okay? You can't imagine how big is the increase in the prolactin during pregnancy. It increased up to 10 or 40 fold increase during pregnancy till term, okay? Ranging in some studies between 35 up to 600 nanogram or more per minute, okay? Why this increase? This increase of prolactin is due to excess estrogen during pregnancy. Excess estrogen leads to increase in the prolactin. Okay. One example of the pathologic causes is the tumor. As I said before, the secreting prolactin, which is prolactinoma, pituitary prolactinoma. This is the commonest pathologic cause. And you should know also that such tumors are found in approximately 30% of those with symptoms of amenorrhea galactinoma. Okay, lock, lock to this table, please. So, we have physiologic, pathologic, and the idiopathic. So, the etiology could be idiopathic or due to the following causes. What are the following causes in this table? Physiologic causes, hypothalamic or infundibular lesion, pituitary lesion, systemic disease, and the medication. As I said before, Physiologic causes like pregnancy, lactation, nipple stimulation, stress, sleep, sexual intercourse, hypothalamic or infundibular lesion like tumor, craniopharyngioma, meningioma, sarcoidosis, trauma, histocytosis, or radiation, hypothalamic pituitary stock damage, maybe due to the pituitary lesion like prolactinoma, the commonest cause, acromegaly, empty cell, lymphocytic hyper hypophysitis. Sarcoidosis, cystocytosis, Cushing disease, TB, maybe systemic disease like liver cirrhosis, chronic renal failure, like hypothyroidism, like epileptic seizure, like ectopic production in hypernephroma or bronchogenic sarcoma, reflux, reflex causes like chest wall trauma, surgery, or herpes zoster, or maybe due to medication like antipsychotics like chemocyazine, resperidone. Or gastrointestinal motility medication like metoclopramide or domperidone, antidepressant, antihypertensive medication like verabamil, missile doba, rizerbine, or opioid, or misadone, estrogen, and antiandrogen. All these are causes of hyperprolactin. Okay. 
So what about the clinical presentation? Clinical presentation, please divide them into two main groups. The first is the symptoms and signs related to hyperprolactinemia itself. The second is the symptoms and signs related to pituitary mass. If there is pituitary adenoma, like prolactinoma, for example. So, symptoms due to hyperprolactinemia include oligomenorrhea, amenorrhea, or menorrhagia. Infertility due to suppression of ovulation, of course, or due to phase insufficiency. Galactorrhea, which is a milky nipple discharge. Vaginal dryness, causing painful intercourse. Okay. As regard, this is a complication of ovulatory dysfunction. Decrease of estrogen has an effect on the vagina, causing vaginal dryness and painful intercourse. Low bone, low, bone, low bone mass because of ovulatory dysfunction, decreased estrogen, leading to osteopenia and osteoporosis, and the patient may complain of bone aches or frictions. So, uh, all of these are symptoms and signs related to hyperprolactinemia. Okay? What are the symptoms and signs related to pituitary mass? There is pituitary tumor, a tumor, so there is increase in intracranial tension, there is headache. Also, it is nearby to optic chiasma, it may cause visual field defect, also may cause ophthalmoplegia. So, how to reach a diagnosis? Of course, comprehensive history taking is important, physical examination is important, try to exclude causes of hyperprolactinemia. Of course, during history taking, can exclude the, the, the drug or medication that cause hyperprolactinemia, like antipsychotic drug, antihypertensive drug, and so on, H2 blocker, and so on. Also, detect symptoms and signs of hyperprolactinemia, as we mentioned before, like amenorrhea or legumenorrhea, or menorrhagia, or inability to conceive, or bone aches, or vaginal dryness, and painful intercourse. All symptoms and signs of hyperprolactinemia should be excluded during history and the physical examination, or proved if it is present, okay? And definite etiology could be also identified during history and the physical examination, okay? Definite etiology for hyperprolactinemia. Then, next step is to measure serum prolactin. So, after you discover the symptoms and signs of hyperprolactinemia, or may detect the etiology, symptoms and signs including the amenorrhea, galactorrhea, and so on, then you are going to test the serum prolactin. Okay? Which time is best? You can do at any time, but it was found that mid-morning and the fasting is better and the, even if you did it at any time and you found it slightly elevated please before taking any decision repeat repeat the test of serum prolactin at mid-morning and the fasting ask the patient to go fasting because meal may increase the serum prolactin and mid-morning because in early morning, there's circadian increased rhythm and in the release of prolactin. So, mid-morning is a, is a nice time and the patient is fasting is a very nice, okay? Some believe that venipuncture itself is stressful and can raise the serum prolactin. So, you should ask the patient to take a rest before venipuncture for 70 minutes, but it is not a routine work. Okay, what about lab test? As I said, serum prolactin. TSH is important because there may be hypothyroidism, which is the cause of hyperprolactinemia. FSH and LH may be needed. Adrenocorticotropic hormone is needed in some cases. Renal function tests like serum creatinine. Insulin like growth factor 1 may be needed. Testosterone or estradiol level. 
and pregnancy test if you are suspecting pregnancy. Okay, so this investigation is not done as a routine. It is done only when it is indicated. MRI like MRI on the pituitary with contrast is the preferred imaging study if you are suspecting pituitary adenoma, prolactinoma, micro or macro adenoma. Magnetic resonance imaging is a good imaging technique for diagnosing the prolactinoma. Visual field test, testing, yes, is important in case of macroadenoma and the tumor that is adjacent to or compressing with the optic chiasma. We said that this area of the pituitary adenoma is nearby to optic chiasma, so it can affect the visual field. So do visual field testing by referring your patient to ophthalmologist. For differential diagnosis, it is better to differentiate between different causes of hyperprolactinemia to manage properly. Like dopamine antagonist medication, primary hypothyroidism, prolactinoma, hypothalamic disease, pregnancy, liver cirrhosis, renal failure, pituitary tumor, idiopathic hyperprolactinemia, which you can reach the diagnosis of idiopathic if you exclude all other causes, physiological and pathological. So what is the treatment of hyperprolactinemia? Treatment depends on the cause mainly. Okay? Okay. So if hyperprolactinemia is drug induced, like what? Like lock, please lock to this table. Drug induced hypersecretion of prolactin. Dopamine receptor blocking agents, for example, phenocyzine, benzo benzamides, butyrophenones, like halobridol. Also, dopamine depleting agents like reserbeel, alpha methyl dopa, opiates, histamine receptor antagonists like cimetidine, ranitidine, stimulator of serotonin serotonergic pathway. Stimulator for steroidergic pathway, like what? Like amphetamine. Also, hormones like estrogen and anti-androgen. Serotonin reuptake inhibitor like loxetine. Calcium channel blocker like brabamil. Okay, so this is our different example to drug-induced hyperprotein. So, if I found one of these drugs taken by the patient, what I'm going to do? First, if you can stop this drug temporarily to see if prolactin level normalized, yes, do it. But if medication cannot be discontinued, especially, for example, antipsychotic, you can change it to different group of antipsychotic, which is not increasing prolactin. Okay, so just changing the type of antipsychotic drug may be helpful. Okay, okay, and of course you should refer to psychologist, psychiatric doctor to change the medication. Okay, if that is not possible to change the drug, the addition of dopamine agonists like cabargulin or bromocryptin should be considered. So, here I can give medical treatment by giving dopamine agonists like cabargulin or bromocryptin. Okay? So, please remember the sequence of events in case of drug-induced hyperbolectin. Another cause for hyperbolectinemia is which is a hypothyroidism. The patient should be treated with thyroid replacement therapy and to confirm normalization of prolactin level after treatment. So you can give altraxin and so on. And do follow up with TSH TH from 6 to 12 weeks after replacement of thyroid. Okay? What if the patient has a prolactinoma? And as I said, it's the commonest pathologic causes of hyperprolactinoma. Prolactinoma. 
Prolactinoma can be managed medical or surgical and radiotherapy. Okay. So either medical or surgery and radiotherapy. Okay. Let us start with the medical treatment. Most prolactinoma, fortunately, are treated with medical therapy only. So I'm not in need of surgery. And the dopamine agonist therapy is used to decrease prolactin level, also tumor size, and normalize gonadal function for symptomatic patients with microadenoma or macroadenoma. It's very nice. And here is a picture of two different categories of dopamine agonists. Cabargolin, which is the one, this one, 0 0.5 milligram per tablet, is given every week. It has a longer duration of action. Or twice a week, in a dose twice a week, or once a week, because it has a long duration of action. And has a lesser side effect than the other partner in treatment, the other dopamine agonist, which is a promocleptin, 2.5 milligram per tap, given daily. Promocleptin has more side effects and has a shorter duration of action. Longer duration of action is cabergoline. Lesser side effect, better tolerated by the patient. So it is a better and more effective treatment is the cabergolin than the bromocryptin. Bromocryptin is not tolerable by many patients because of the many side effects, okay? However, bromocryptin has one, still one advantage. It can be given during the pregnancy. Better than cabergolin, okay? <clears throat> Okay, what is the side effects of dopamine agonist drugs? Nausea, vomiting, headache, dizziness, faintness, constipation, nasal stiffness, digital vasospasm, spasm, depression, and postural hypotension. Medical management can be undertaken for a period ranging from 18 months to 6 or more years in case of prolactinoma. Okay? As I said, cabargolin is the first choice because of its efficacy and the fewer side effects. But as regard during a pregnancy, promocryptin is the preferred one because of more favorable data than cabargolin. What about surgery and radiotherapy? Surgery and radiotherapy are reserved for those who are resistant to medical therapy with dopamine agonist. Like what? Like endoscopic endonasal transphenoidal surgery. Prophylactic surgery is considered in women with large prolactinoma, which potentially threaten vision during pregnancy. Sometimes you are in emergency because you are afraid about the vision. Because, as I said before, prolactinoma is nearby to optic asthma. Adjuvant radiation therapy should be considered for residual tumor. So I can add post-operative radiation therapy for residual in a residual tumor. Gamma knife stereotactic radiology is often effective in treatment of prolactinoma resistant to two or intolerant of dopamine agonists. Okay, what if the cause of hyperprolactinemia, hypothalamic disease? You should remove the cause or manage the cause. This is the first choice. If not, hyperprolactinemia should be treated with dopamine agonist as cabergolin and or bromocryptin or bromocryptin, sorry. Cabergolin or bromocryptin. Okay, so if you found a, a treatable cause, you can manage. If not, give dopamine agonist like cabergolin or promocrin. What if the case, I, I do history, examination, investigation, I cannot find any definite etiology. So we diagnose such case as idiopathic hyperprolactinemia. 
what you are going to do with idiopathic hyperprolactinemia. Hyperprolactinemia, which is diagnosed as idiopathic, is treated with dopamine agonist cabargolin. And I said before the dose, 0.25 milligram twice per week. And bromocryptin, in a dose of 2.5 milligram per day, you can start with a smaller dose till the patient becomes more tolerant to the drug because of side effects, then reach up to 2.5 milligram or more according to the prolactin level. Okay? This is the routinely given drugs, cabargolin or promotriptan. As I said before, cabargolin has a better effect and less side effects okay dosage can be adjusted to keep the lowest possible dose with the normal level of prolactin if the patient attains a normal prolactin on the last dose of dopamine agonist for two years for example the drug can be discontinued as a trial so when you reach it, the normal value you can do discontinuation of the drug and this is the last slide here please look to this scheme for management of hyperplatinemia first exclude the physiological causes or drug causes by taking history and doing physical examination then don't depend on one test for hyperbolitinemia, especially if it is slightly elevated. You should repeat it. And if you repeat it, please repeat it mid-morning and the fast. Because to be accurate as regards the risk. Okay? If you repeat it and find it normal, it's okay, no problem. If it's still elevated, what you are going to do? Do serum TSH. Okay? to define if there is hypothyroidism or not. If TSH is high, so this denoting hypothyroidism. Complete the test for hypothyroidism, thyroid function test, and start to give the patient thyroid hormone replacement syrup. Then repeat the prolactin and the TSH after 6 to 12 weeks. If you found everything was fine, become fine, so the cause was hypothyroidism, just correction of the problem of hypothyroidism, the patient is improved and everything is fine. Okay? So, repeat test of serum prolactin after 6 to 12 weeks and TSH. What if the TSH was normal and the cell prolactin is high? You can do MRI or CT scan to diagnose pituitary microadenoma or macroadenoma or exclude both, okay? So if there is normal scan or hyperplasia, you can do expectant management or medical management and repeat MRI after six months if the condition persists of hyperplasia. If there is microadenoma, you should start medical management immediately by cabergoline or bromocryptin immediately, okay? Dopamine agonist, okay? And do follow up. If the case was macroadenoma, you should start medical management and you may need, you may need also, in certain cases, surgical and radiotherapy management, okay? This is came to simplify how to reach the diagnosis and how to manage, okay? I hope this lecture was beneficial for you, everybody. This is my box published on Amazon textbook of obstetric textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, and the multiple choice question book, medical disorder in pregnancy book, and the gynecologic oncology book. This is my site on Amazon as an author. You can go there to find my box. Also, you can go to through this link to find the other lecture on YouTube channel. And this is my blog spot side also i'll put the youtube 
channel link in a comment and my site on Amazon on another comment to facilitate for you to reach to my bot. Thank you everybody, wishing you the best.